for? Nope. Okay. Um, okay. I'm here with Suzanne Pope, and we're hanging out before the big ad buzz event, where I will be giving a fascinating, if I say so myself, speech I title, um, Leveraging Cultural Tensions to Improve Creativity. Uh, short version is that I think it's easier to get to cool ideas when you base your, your strategies or just your executions on, on, on what I'll call uh, uh, what I'll call tectonic plates where they grind against each other. When you base your ideas on top of these places where there's social tension, you get to more ideas because there's energy there. A social tension is like obesity. We're kind of ripped up about food. We love food, but we hate being fat. Or cars, you know, we love getting places, but there's pollution. Or there's the issue in America of safety or privacy. Those are those are places where there's opinions and different things. And whenever you have that, you have conflict. Protagonists and antagonists in, in movies. It's conflict. All storytelling comes from conflict. And conflict comes from having two things that are opposed or polar or just different. Uh, this is anyway my theory. Uh, and uh, we'll be talking about it at Ed Buzz. Um, and uh, I'm available. Huh. Invite me to your thing. Seriously. Huh. Suzanne, I'm using your thing as an ad. Okay, awesome. Uh, invite me to your uh, big yeah. speaking event. I'll, I'll rock and roll and be awesome. really cool. Luke, can you, can you give us an example? You, you had a good example about banking. Oh, well, a... yeah. Well, for instance, if I had to sit down and do an ad about banking, even categories have their own conflicts, their own tectonic plates grinding against each other. I'm, I'm pissed off at banking. I mean, you know, as an American, Wall Street, we crashed the economy, and bankers are still out there, you know, tipping their caddies with my overdraft fees. And I'm angry at banking. So if there's a conflict about banking that if I were to sit down and do a big ass campaign and I didn't address, I didn't address that anger. I just think I'd be inauthentic and it would it would just be bullshit. You would just have this. Oh, our bankers are friendly and our pins are unchanged, but you can take one if you want. I don't know. It's all bullshit. But if you could base your strategy on the anger that people have out there, it's likely you're going to have more interesting work. So what should creative people, what should a creative director say to the client who wants shiny, happy people, who, oh, does, not want con who does not want conflict to be addressed in an ad? Shiny, happy people, we talked about that at breakfast, is it's kind of like ha trying to have a movie with just the good guy. Yeah. There's no story there. It's just sort of, yes, it works, but most of the 50s was shiny, happy people, and it was just, basically what you've got there is a, is a strategy that says fresh food means better health. I've actually had to work on that one once, and you know the deal is you can't argue with it. Well, I guess you're right. Fresh food does mean better health. When you sit down to work on it, it's shiny happy because there's nothing going on. There's no movie going on there. It's it, it's all figured out for you. Right. Fresh food means better health. It's almost as if I don't, as a reader, need to be involved. Right. We've got it all figured out. Oh yeah. yeah, fresh food does mean better health. That's very boring. I'm going to be over here. Yeah. Versus finding something that. Here's the way I learned from Mark Finsky. He said. When you sit down, ask yourself, what is the truest thing, what's the truest thing you can say about your product or your category? Not what the research says or not what people want to hear about or what you kind of think is cool about it. What is the truest thing? But generally, that gets you to an area of emotion. And when you're into an area of emotion, it's generally true that you're around an area of conflict. Uh, um, I'm trying to think of a good example. What you, Heath Ledger. Oh, that was a good example. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you try to do hot, shiny, happy people, uh, it's boring because there's only the protagonist, which would be just Bruce Wayne without you know, the Heath Ledger. We love the bad guys. We love the, you know, what's his face? Uh, Darth Vader. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, not Luke, surprisingly. Yes. Yes. Uh, but the bad guys are always more interesting. Yes. Certainly, how about this? When the bad guys are on stage and there's conflict, that's the part we find interesting. That's right. When everything is okay, generally, when everything is okay, we're not interested. When everything's figured out, we're sailing, smooth sailing, it's like that old joke I tell, uh, you'll never see a headline that says, uh, plane lands safely at airport. <laughs> it's good, I'm glad it did, yeah. but I don't need to be involved, I'll be over here, thanks very much. You need, I think, it's just yeah. an opinion, but I think yeah. you need conflict. And that yeah. doesn't mean Sturm and Drang and a whole bunch of guns out. It just means things in opposition. Yes. Things yes. in opposition. Where you have that going on, there's energy. Yeah. And where there's energy, generally, there's a chance for better creativity.
I suspect as a species we're, we're hardwired to think in terms of conflict because it's our ability to address conflict that allows us to survive, whether it's the saber-toothed tiger or yeah. the opposing soldiers or what have you. Well, yeah, it is. I think it starts with that. It goes down to that at some level. But also, even up in our higher functions, I don't know why, I think our, we are wired to like story. Yes. I do believe, uh, uh, and I've read that book by that marvelous screenwriter called Story, uh, we are wired to really enjoy story. I think somebody once told me that storytelling is, is now a co is actually a cognitive way of storing information for us. Yes. With a story, we can hang ideas on top of a story. So we we are, we draw we're drawn to stories. We love stories, but it's uh, it has to to be a story to be interesting. It can't be. You can't start off with, and they lived happily ever after, yes. which is basically what fresh food means better health. <laughs> it is. It's, it's, it's positive from the get-go, and it's boring from the get-go. You need to open on a problem. Yes. The Greeks, they called it, in their storytelling, they called it in media, in media res, race. Yes. That meant in the middle of things. Yes. So that's why you'll see a lot of movies open up, and there's something going on already. Yes. Okay, there's, a, there's this guy over here, and there's this guy over here, and it's a standoff, and the whole backstory is kind of vis is in the background, and the story begins because there's tension and it's set up very quickly and clearly. You know who the good guy is and what he wants and what the bad guy is and what he wants. It's story. And we're just riveted by it. We're so riveted by it that we will... How many times, Susan, have you stayed up late to see a movie that you've seen before for the 20th time but you're still watching it? Yes. We love story. We love story. I know how the story's going to end. I know, I know. It's going to get shot and credits roll by. Doesn't matter. I have to see the Bourne series over and over and over because it's story. I just love story. Speaking of story, a moment for Ray Bradbury. Yeah, for sure. Ray Bradbury is my hero. You should have heroes too in this business. You should have heroes. I don't care if it's Doyle Dane Bernbach or, or Lee Clow. You figure it out. He was my hero. He was my hero. He uh, uh, got me into writing. I read the, the Martian Chronicles uh, when I was in high school, and I never looked back. I've been reading ever since. He lit the fire for me for reading. Stephen King, who was a big Ray Bradbury fan, once said that uh, there's two rules if you want to be a writer. One is read a lot, and the other is write a lot. So Ray taught me to read a lot. Ray said he didn't have a college education. He went to the library for about 10 years straight, he said. The dude knew about reading. The dude was a writer to the core. Ah, just pick up the Martian Chronicles, or, yeah, pick up the Martian Chronicles or Golden Apples of the Sun and just study the dude. He is such a good writer. I mean, people call him a science fiction writer, but that's people who don't know him. He's just a writer and such a good one. And he'll teach you about story because these, all, they're almost all short stories about this long. They have this beautiful beginning, middle, and end, and something happens and the character is changed by it. It's just, it's like graduate school for writers. Read Ray Bradbury, my friends.